Hal Varian is likely the world's richest economist. How did that happen? Was it his best-selling books, his pioneering papers on auctions? Maybe his cool last name helped? Varian. Nope. It was just that one time he changed the y-axis on a graph to a logarithmic scale. That's it. Here's the story. It's 2002. Google's just a small startup instead of the mega monolith that knows your every thought and action. Now, young Google has a problem. Hits on their search engine are plummeting. Those early Google employees are panicked. Oh man, I'm not going to be super rich. I'm just going to be regular rich. But then... His name's Hal Varian. Now, Hal's just a consultant at the time, but... I wrote the goddamn book on economics. So he's kind of a big deal. Commence logarithmic transformation. Problem fixed, because there ain't no problem. All right, let's pause here. So what did Varian do? Well, it's very important and it's very subtle. Sometimes just having the data isn't enough. You need to figure out the right way to approach or present the data to actually see what's happening. So usually we use a linear scale. The numbers are evenly spaced apart. So a unit change here is the same as a unit change here. An increase of one is an increase of one. But maybe a one unit change isn't the right way to think about things. Like if I give a dollar to my son, yay, yay. his reaction is much different than if I give a dollar to my wife. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to be a part of this video. Get out of here. But in both cases, it's a one unit change. The difference is my son is down here in terms of income. Let's say he makes a dollar from charming his grandma or something. So for him, a one dollar increase is a hundred percent increase in his income. My wife, on the other hand, is somewhere up here in terms of how much she makes. I don't know how much she makes, but let's say it's up here. So if I give her a dollar, it represents just a small percentage of her income. Hence, the difference in reactions. Yay, look at his money! Similarly, if I lose a thousand visitors on my website, that's a different story if I started with 2,000 or if I started with 2 million. So sometimes it's better to think in terms of percent changes rather than unit changes. Let's look at some made up data. Here we have a series that doubles every period and we're using a linear y-axis, our usual y-axis. Let's switch to a logarithmic scale and see what happens. Now the data looks like a straight line because on a logarithmic scale, differences are in percent changes or multiples. So the distance between one and two is the same as the distance between eight and 16 because in percent terms, those are both 100% increases. Going from one to two is a doubling, just like going from eight to 16 is also a doubling. Similarly, this fourfold increase is the same distance whether it's here or here because we're now on a logarithmic scale. So distances are in multiples. So it depends on the data set and the goal of the analysis, but if it makes more sense to think in percent terms than unit terms, then you want to use a logarithmic Y axis. Let's go back to Google. Visits to their website look something like this. Hal Varian sees the recent drop that has Google panicked, but he also sees something going on over here. So he thinks maybe the right way to think about this is in percent changes. So he does the logarithmic transformation and boom, it pops out. This drop right here in percent terms is the same as this drop over here. And there's this other drop that we didn't even see before. In percent terms, they're all the same. What had happened was Google had grown so much over 2002 that this drop looked very large in comparison to what had come before. But in percent terms, it was the same drop that had happened every previous year around that time. So what's going on here? Well, Varian doesn't know exactly, but he sees it's happening every summer. So maybe people are on vacation. Remember, it's uh, 2002, there's no iPhone. So people actually went outside in the summer. They used to literally touch grass. But whatever it is, it's no big deal because it has happened every summer. It's not this apocalyptic event that his coworkers thought. So it's nothing, but it's not nothing. Because if we look at this graph versus this graph, they are telling two completely different stories with the same data. It's incredible insight from Varian to move from the standard one to the logarithmic one, where you can actually see that there's nothing going on. So Varian goes back to his coworkers and he's like, hey, don't worry. We're just dealing with a little thing called August. Yay, yay, yay. yay. So, we're, so we're gonna be gajillionaires still? We're gonna, and live forever? That's right. Now make me your chief economist. And they did. 
all because he could think in terms of percentages. So that's the story of how Hal Varian became employee 40 at Google. Now his wealth isn't public, but unless he somehow didn't get stock or sold it all in 2003, he's very wealthy. Basically, the only way he's not the world's richest economist is if he's the world's worst economist, which he's not. Do you have another candidate for richest economist? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out some more econ videos. <laughs>